Ahoy, shipmates. And today, I thought we'd have a look at a white horse. Now, I appreciate this is not the normal thing we see on the Silent Ships channel. I was out on my motorcycle, out for a little ride up from the lovely little village of Marlborough towards uh, Wooten Bassett. Lovely stretch of road, never been across before. And I spotted this white horse on the road. So I thought I'd have a quick stop off and give you a little drone. It's quite a popular feature across many of the chalk hills in the south. I'm not sure what breed of white horse that is. I mean, gangly legged one. But I think this is probably more what you're expecting to see, shipmates. The RRS Discovery. The Royal Research Ship Discovery. Now, she's leaving Port Southampton on her way across the Atlantic. I just sped up that little bit of footage there as she was taking quite a time coming out from port. There are a couple of actual RRS ships in the Port of Southampton. We have the RRS Discovery and the RRS James Cook. Uh, the first recorded Discovery was owned by the East India Company in the 17th century. And in 1901, perhaps the most famous Discovery was launched in Dundee. And under the command of Commander Robert Falcon Scott, undertook the National Antarctic Expedition of 1901-04. She was designated a Royal Research Ship in 1925 and began the discovery of investigations to enable the study of the Great Whales in the Southern Oceans. RRS Discovery 2, launched in Glasgow in 1929, continued the research begun by discovery into whale populations and the chemical and hydrological properties of the Southern Ocean. The next RRS discovery was launched in Aberdeen in 1962. Her 382 cruises included surveying the ocean floor, measuring ocean currents, monitoring climate change and discovering new species. A refit in 1992 extended her life until 2012, where she departed the National Orthographic Centre in Southampton. We can see that from cruise cam, of course. For her last journey, and the 21st of December, watched by many who sailed on her during her half-century of service for the UK Marine Science. The present RS Discovery, the one we're looking at at the moment, was launched in Vigo in Spain, and named by HRH the Princess Royal on 10th of October 2013. Discovery will continue to work of her illustrious predecessors in enhancing our knowledge of the ocean. Also says the National Oceanographic website with lots of information if you want to know more about this ship. Along with the cruise ships and container ships and ferries, we do actually have all sorts of varieties of ships in the Port of Southampton and the RRS Discovery would be one of them. She, like I say, she's built for sailing around the world and carrying out lots of oceanographic surveys. She has single and multi-beam echo sounders, integrated data logging, seismic surveys, clean water sampling, remotely operated vehicles, deep. Oh, we also get a good view here of the new cruise ship terminal. That's a dark grey and light grey building in your top right hand corner of the screen, which is named by a local person as the Horizon Terminal. I think I'm going to scoot around here with the sun behind me, hopefully, and see if I can give myself a little shot. She looks very purposeful. And there's a magenta container ship in the background. Now that we're down a bit closer to the RRS Discovery, we can see she has a very different layout from some of the ships we're used to seeing in port. And it looks like she's got a Father Christmas installed on the bow. And helpfully, he looks like he's pointing out where the cameras are to wave at. That's a good feature, that is. There's uh, lots of deck areas for the handling of various different items like the submersibles and extra equipment when they're out surveying compared to the rrs james cook she's slightly longer slightly narrower leading to better fuel economy well, i have made a bit of an error here i've neglected to change the settings on my camera so 
instead of shooting raw photographs, which I normally do, and then edit them afterwards in the digital darkroom, I'm just taking JPEGs. It's not giving me the flexibility and control that I wish for. I think this will become self-evident when we go around the other side here and try and take some into the light. You can see there's a lot of space on the back for equipment and cranes and containers. I'll say she's off to the Atlantic somewhere. I don't actually know where her destination is. I'm guessing that she'll probably just be at sea for a number of months and surveying. Let's try one here. Yeah, it's, I just can't. Uh, without the raw image, it's really difficult. And shooting into the sun is always tricky. That's a bit of a shame there. A bit of a schoolboy error. I should always check my settings before I fly. Well, the National Oceanographic Terminal is just over to your left behind the stern of the Queen Mary 2, we can just see there. Now that she's getting to Dockhead, she might uh, begin to speed up. She has a two azimuth drives rather than the conventional fixed shafts and propellers. These aid for maneuverability and I'm also led to believe adds to the fuel efficiency of the vessel, which is probably a good thing considering the number of hours she probably spends at sea surveying. From what I can read from the very informative website, she sounds like a floating university laboratory. Air sampling, water sampling, data logging, echo sounders, Ultra short baseline, satellite and internet phones, winch systems, mini GPS systems. I must say, it would be quite something to have a little tour around the ship and have a look at all the systems that are on board. But I shall probably call that a day. I'm getting a bit low on battery juice. So, till next time, shipmates.